with Bach prelude number one, we established how the relationship between composer, the player, and the listener are equally important for music to mean anything, and that composing, playing, and listening are equally creative and imaginative act. Going on with Prelude Number no. Two by Bach in the same Well Tempered Clavier Book One, I would like to demonstrate again and further how the player can influence the delivery of the written music so much. So the piece goes like this. sound different in character because of the C major going to C minor, a different mode, right? And also because whereas um, the prelude number one was one note at a time, this it's always a note against another note um, in two voices. However, in that this again is a arpeggiated, very simple harmonic progression, like these two preludes are very, very similar, as you can see. And Prelude number two leaves the player and the listener for wider interpretation, wider freedom of interpretation than prelude number one did in many ways. For example, in prelude number one, as you saw, there was a specification of the bass notes to be held through. Right? And then the tenor, on top of it also to be held on top of two voices where the right hand was to do equal 16th notes whereas in prelude number two every note is an equal 16th note no notes are held or emphasized by the composer himself so the player and the listener can decide what notes to emphasize or to listen for. This is a matter of voicing. So if there is a chord, playing the same chord but emphasizing different notes would give the same chord different shades. See, all I did just now be between the two examples is to highlight the top note or the bottom note. Very different sound, right? Likewise, I can do this. different feel, right? I can also decide to highlight the right hand over the left hand. Or highlight the left hand over the right hand. Okay. Now, a viewer or a listener might ask me, the harpsichord would not have been capable of such dynamic variations, such sound volume variations, right? That's true. 
to that I say two things. <laughs> One, Bach was such a composer that he had in mind for his pieces to be played by a variety of instruments. Even in his days, he had the harpsichord, the clavichord, and organs for keyboard. Two, harpsichord players had different ways of highlighting um, different notes, varying the length, varying the timing. So, for example, they could have done, um, they could have played the left hand very short, detached, and then the right hand kind of sustained. Or vice versa, or they could have done uh, sort of lengthening the note that they wanted to emphasize. Now, they had different. I can also choose to be lyrical in all the sixteenth notes that I have to play with. I can also do different groupings. So instead of going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, emphasizing the first note of the eighth, eight groups, for example, I can emphasize the fifth note. something that we did not have in prelude number one. So the two voices that have been singing against each other, note against note, contrapuntal, uh, counterpoint. Um, now we have a single line. So the difference, the sudden change in texture is surprising. And then we have this monologue, an outburst, that's followed by the second voice in canon. So the second voice is saying exactly what the first voice said, except with a time lapse. What should their relationship be? Should the second voice be an echo, which is what I did just now, or should they be absolutely equal? Or should they do something different from each other? Um, should the second voice be louder, actually? All sorts of things and I am exaggerating all of these things but all of these things can be done in gradation so it could be much more subtle and it could also be inconsistent so one measure can do different things from the next measure so on and so forth that is interpretation and when the player's interpretation is subtle enough the listener can superimpose her imagination onto the player's interpretation um, and imagine further as to what Bach had intended or how Bach would have played the piece. Very interesting. This is what makes music so much fun. <laughs> okay, here is prelude number two from Well Temper Clavier, book one. Thank you. 